January 6, 2021, and a large group of protesters have just forced their way inside the U.S. Capitol building. They've interrupted an important government meeting that's supposed to confirm the results of the 2020 presidential election. Madam Speaker, members of Congress, pursuant to the Constitution and the laws of the United States, the Senate and House of Representatives are meeting in joint session. This meeting is one of the most important parts to show how American democracy works. The protesters have made their way past security and entered areas where only lawmakers are allowed, and they're demanding that the results of the election be thrown out. But even though this event was shocking, it was just one sign of a bigger problem with the voting in the United States. Every four years, more than 150 million Americans vote for president, and billions around the world watch as the results come in. After four long, tense days, we can now project the winner of the presidential race. And voting is one of the most important parts of the American democracy. And for a long time, most people believed in it. In 2008, 71% of Americans believed that elections were fair and honest. But since then, trust has been going down. By 2016, only 55% of Americans still had that trust. And by this day in 2020, it had dropped even more to 38%. Now the media is quick to tell us how the 22 election saw a record-breaking turnout. This 2020 election breaks the record for the highest percentage of voter turnout in the history of the United States. But they often skip over the fact that more and more people are doubting the results more than ever. It's called counting the votes, though. No, it's not. It's called cheating. The United States has one of the most established democracies in the world. So, why does no one trust the elections anymore? One <laughs> Our country great again. And Mexico will pay for the wall. I'm gonna build a wall. I wanna build a wall. Are you ready to vote for democracy and for America? I am feeling hopeful. Yes, we can. The United States have dealt with voting problems before. In the 1850s, people just started using paper ballots. And that's because this was supposed to fix the issues with verbal voting, like people being pressured or cheated into voting for a specific candidate. But as more people voted and elections got more and more complicated, it became harder to manage paper ballots safely and quickly. And throughout the entire 1900s, paper voting had a lot of issues. Like in the 1960 presidential election, there were claims of cheating in the state of Illinois. People said that ballot boxes were stuffed and even dead people were voting. Then in the year 2000, we had the hanging Chad controversy in Florida that exposed the limitations of punch card voting systems. The 2000 presidential election was a flashpoint event in American history that tested the integrity of our democratic system. In an unprecedented decision by the Supreme Court, George W. Bush was declared the winner. And all of this just showed that paper voting came with a lot of drama, like mistakes, cheating, and slow results. But once the 2016 election started getting heat with accusations of Russian interference. That Russia attempted to interfere in the 2016 elections. None. In 2016, we know that Russian actors targeted state election systems. In a democracy, citizens must have faith that their vote counts and is counted correctly. Russia meddled in our 2016 election. It became real obvious that America needed a new way to vote nationally. Reports show that several states are moving away from paper ballots and using technology in the upcoming elections. The future of voting has officially arrived. But this solution wasn't perfect. It came with its own set of problems. Electronic voting machines promised to make voting faster and easier. But they also had to be safe from cheating and hacking because the people needed to be sure that their votes were being counted correctly. And so the companies that's making the electronic voting machines had to solve a lot of problems. One, they needed to create a paper record of votes for checking later. Two, the machines had to be safe from hackers. And three, they had to be easy for everyone to use. So two years after the hanging Chad controversy in Florida, the government passed a law called the Help America Vote Act. This law gave states federal money to buy new electronic voting machines to help with voter turnout. But it also came with a bunch of rules like the new machines had to work with people with disabilities. The machines had to offer a bunch of different languages and they had to have the ability to stop people from making mistakes while they're voting. So over the years, a lot of states started to use these new direct recording electronic machines or DRAs. 
Some machines were touchscreens, others were scanners for paper ballots. And believe it or not, a few states even tried bowling over the internet for people living outside of the country. But a lot of election officials weren't too keen on these machines because they felt like they were being forced on them even though they still had to use them. So in the 2004 and 2008 elections, a bunch of states were forced to use these electronic voting machines. And it seemed to work well, because for the first time, more people were voting than ever before and voting faster and easier. And since a lot of states removed the paper process, people spent half as much time at voting places. And in the 2008 election, for the first time, we were able to announce the winner the night of the election. Americans who sent a message to the world that we have never been just a collection of individuals or a collection of red states and blue states, we are and always will be the United States of America. And the 2008 election started a new wave for how we view elections, because now we can officially turn up on election night if our guy wins. Obama, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind, hey Obama! Now the 2008 election should have been the future for how all elections work. It should have made the voting process more trustworthy and efficient for everyone. But instead, it just sparked a new problem that's plaguing the US elections today. Okay, so the success of electronic voting led a lot of states to use it. In fact, by 2016, 44 states were using some type of electronic voting. And as more states bought these systems, the companies making them saw a chance to grow their business. With Dominion voting systems, your vote has never been safer. But instead of keeping things simple and reliable, these companies started adding complicated features. We've updated our design to ensure casting your vote is simple and easy. And so voting machines went from basic touchscreens to almost complex computers. They added things like wireless connections and biometric voter identification, all in the name of being able to send real-time results. So it was this race to add all this new technology that created the new problems that Americans have with the process. Because as the systems get more complex, it became harder for regular people to understand how they work. I was invited to hack a real voting system while people were watching, was in Washington, D.C. in 2010. And in that instance, it took less than 48 hours for us to change all the votes, and we were not caught. And so this made it easier for people to doubt the system, with the irony being that the things that were put in place to make elections more trustworthy and secure is actually making people trust them less. So take a look at this. This is a chart that shows as more places started using electronic voting over the last 20 years, people's trust in the elections actually went down. And now, trust in elections is actually at its lowest point ever, because after the problem with the 2000 elections between Bush and Gore, People hoped that the new voting technology would make things easier, but actually the opposite happened. Now I want to point out one thing about this chart. It actually shows how the use of electronic voting affected overall trust. It doesn't show the differences between the types of systems in different parts of the country. And if we look even closer at that, things get even more complicated. In states using only electronic systems without paper records, even fewer people trust the results. By 2018, in these states, less than 40% of voters were sure that their votes were counted correctly. And the 2020 election showed the big gap in trust based on the type of voting system used. In places where paper ballots were marked by hand, about 76% of voters trusted the results. But in places using machines that mark ballots, only 54% of voters trusted the results. So as we look ahead to this upcoming election, in states planning to use new voting technologies, only 31% of voters have high confidence in the upcoming election. So no matter how you look at it, one thing is clear. As voting systems become more high tech, people are going to trust the election results less. And so now the United States is facing this weird paradox. More technology, less trust. So if we know the elections have this inverse relationship, then why are so many states so gung-ho about using technology? Because for years, election officials knew that new voting technology actually reduces trust in elections. But the pitch is always the same, that the electronic voting systems would pay off in the long run. So take a look at this. This is the Election Assistant Commission's yearly report that talks a lot about the benefits of electronic voting. And in this report, they like to use the word modernization a lot. And by this, they mean technical improvements that will help the elections for years to come. For example, let's take a look at a few states that upgraded some tech. Let's start with Georgia, my home state. And Georgia spent $107 million on new voting systems with touchscreens and printers. And the main benefit that they talked about is that the high-tech voting systems will get more people to vote and care about elections over time. Then, Ohio and Pennsylvania followed suit and did the same thing with their new machines. But the reality was, 
Fellas, once they got these new machines, the initial pitch was no longer true. Let's start with the increasing of voter turnout. Well, a 2019 study showed that after Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Ohio got their new machines, slightly more people voted at first. But then, in the 2022 election, voter turnout went down. Other studies in 2014 and 2022 found that electronic voting didn't really help more people get out to vote. It just led to more people trusting the elections less. In other words, trying to be high tech can literally backfire. Look, I don't care. I just don't trust some of these voting systems. Because yes, in some cases, increasing technology can lead to a short-term increase in voter turnout. But if the machines are too hard to use, if they have problems, or if there are stories about hacking. It would be easy to imagine that somebody will hack the machine from the parking lot with never seeing the voting machine. It actually reduces the likelihood of voters wanting to turn out because they trust the system less. In fact, a lot of security features that's supposed to make people trust the elections more haven't worked as expected. Exploiting a recent upgrade, a Russian-speaking hacker named Rasputin has reportedly hacked into the servers of America's most important database. For example, during the 2020 election, Michigan's voting systems in Antrim County had advanced features that required frequent updates, which led to a human error which miscounted some votes, which in turn reduced people's trust in the election process. In fact, the studies show that even though dozens of states have spent billions of dollars on new voting machines with strong security, millions of voters just simply don't care about this upgraded technology. All they want is a simple and easy way to check their votes. And now the voting machine companies will say, we need these advanced features, and we'll set them up so that hacking is impossible and every vote is protected. It is virtually impossible to hack one of our machines. Once the citizens hear about actual cases of voting machines being actually hacked. I could have made any changes in the system. I mean, the changes like deleting the candidate. I could kick anyone out. I could alter any data, any vote it's easy to understand how they could now distrust the entire election results. And the citizens protesting the 2020 election clearly shows how the trust in the voting system is falling apart, which is only compounded when the sitting president of the United States loses confidence in the results too. I, I won't give Dominion a pass because we found too many bad things, but we don't need Dominion or anything else. We have, we have, all, we have won this election in Georgia based on all of this. And there's, there's nothing wrong with, with saying that, Brad. You know, I mean, having, the, having a correct, you, the people of Georgia are angry. Now the United States is in a crisis of confidence because after the 2020 election, many conspiracy theories about Dominion voting systems popped up. And all of these theories led Fox News to paying a $787 million settlement to Dominion for defamation. But even though there's been no evidence to back up some of the claims about Dominion, we have no evidence that votes were changed as a result of their efforts. And while no actual votes were changed, it doesn't matter. Because a new study done almost two years later shows that one out of every three Americans still don't trust the election results. And many people see these disputes as proof that our voting system is broken. So the idea that electronic voting would be great for building trust in democracy has been around for a long time. But in reality, it often just does the opposite of what we hope. By 2022, voters wanted to fix this problem. So some states tried to go back to paper ballots, but concerns about human error and fraud made some states change their minds. Some states like Michigan decided to simply focus on improving the election audit. So they had over 100,000 people sign a petition to volunteer to help with that part of the process. But no matter how you look at it, one thing is clear. Every state is realizing that election trust is fading. So the Electronic Assistance Commission has made new rules to improve security and openness. And a lot of groups that audit elections say that this could help people trust in elections again. But ironically, if this does work, it could just lead to another wave of new voting technologies and starting the cycle all over again. So what's the solution? Is it technology? Well, after January 6th, I doubt it because it'll likely be a while where we see a big rush to adopt new technology like we did after the Help America Vote Act. But we might see a small move towards simpler, more open systems that can easily be checked with paper ballots. Now these systems is like the Holy Grail and are considered to be less risky than what we have now. But some people want an even bigger change. In the end, it won't be easy to find a system that uses good technology and promotes people's trust. So maybe the overall solution is to simply understand that no matter what we do, there's always going to be a portion of America that just doesn't trust the election outcome. But hey, maybe that's what makes America great.